Hey everybody, I'm Scott McDougall. I'm the ship team leader for Canada C3. We're about to sail around the country in celebration of Canada's 150th anniversary from Toronto to Victoria via the Northwest Passage. And we're starting here in beautiful Lunenburg where we're making our ship ready to go. This is her and I'm about to give you a tour. Come on aboard. a serious science component to this trip, although it's not principally a scientific voyage. And all the science operations are going to happen down here from what we call the well deck. It's going to be a container, like a shipping container, that we've converted into a laboratory. There's going to be a, a davit, like a crane, up on the foredeck to sample water, sample the ocean's bottom. Uh, the laboratory samples are going to be stored here. We have a minus 80 degree freezer coming aboard to store DNA samples. And we're going to have a fleet of Zodiacs here to help our scientists and our participants get ashore to communities along the way, to get out in the water, to be with icebergs, to, say, to, to, to explore the water more intimately. All of that's going to happen here from operations right in the well deck. We're also at the wharf here in Lunenburg right next to the famous Picton Castle. Square rigger that's been around the world multiple times and is getting ready for another season. She's going to join the tall ship fleet this year. This boat was formerly in the Canadian Coast Guard fleet, an icebreaker for the Coast Guard. I like to think she was originally commissioned in the service of the country and she's returning to the service in the country now that we've chartered her for this trip. up here to the companionway and we're going to get into the wheelhouse, the command center for the ship. This is where we launched the emergency rescue boat. It's called FRC, the Fast Rescue Craft. She's not here right now. She's in for annual servicing, but man goes overboard, woman goes overboard. This is the vessel we launched to recover them. So this is where it all happens. This is the wheelhouse or the helm. Helm station right here. The whole ship is controlled at this wheel. The uh, officer of the watch has access to everything. Fire systems, navigational systems, plumbing, electricity, it all comes here so that the ship can run like uh, one fluid system. And in the event that anything goes wrong, anything can be started or shut down from right up here. The navigational center right in this office here. Second officer, navigational officer. Not only has the latest in, in technological navigation equipment, but supplemented by all the traditional tools, charts, tools like this that have been used for going on a thousand years. So from here, the navigator plots our course, keeps us on course, um, which is going to be significant to us. For 150 days, we have a community visit in every community for 150 days. We're going to be, as much as we're going to relish and enjoy the moments, we're also going to be focused on finding that next community, getting there as fast as possible, because we have only 150 days, and we know we, know we need to be in Victoria on October 28th. There's not going to be a lot of time to spare on this trip. So go back out here to the wheelhouse. Multiple radars on a ship like this. Different kind of radars see differently through the fog and ice. This ship as an icebreaker is specially equipped to deal with ice conditions, not only the ability to break ice should we get into the ice uh, as we expect to up north, but the ability to see ice, uh, which can be difficult. Ice reflects signals differently. It looks different. It can be difficult to spot. The ability to see it, especially in foggy conditions, is an important aspect of our going to see in high latitudes like that in the north. So the 
not only the experience of the crew, including the ice navigator aboard, but the technology aboard is very important to, uh, to keep us all safe up there. So we'll go back out on deck. Watch your step here. Behind me, black structure here, soon to be red when we're finished giving this beauty a fresh coat of paint, is the helicopter hangar. We won't be taking a helicopter with us in the voyage. That whole hangar retracts and we'll be using that for some of the educational space aboard. We'll have lectures in there both for our participants aboard and for guests from ashore. In sunny conditions like this we probably would retract that and have an open air session but if the weather is stinky we'll close it up and we can get 60 or 100 people in there and have lectures and, and uh, share some food. It'll be kind of a celebration space for us. Finally I'm going to take you up this place upstairs to what we call Monkey Island. I'm going to delicately reach over the camera and place that on the head of our cameraman. So, Monkey Island offers not only the best vistas on the whole ship, up here in the fresh air, but it's where all the ulti ultimately the radar and navigational equipment is located up here, reports down to the wheelhouse. Um, uh, communication radio antenna, satellite antenna, the radar dishes, and we're about to mount an enormous satellite dome that we will locate here in the aft port position of the ship. That's the one position we'll be able to see this satellite as we make our way counterclockwise around the continent. This satellite is geostationary, which means it maintains one position over the Earth right in the center of the continent. So by putting this dish here, as we make our way around the continent, counterclockwise, we'll always have sight on that communications, on the satellite, excuse me, so it means we'll always be in touch with you. Very fast connection, be able to live stream video. It's gonna be like you're a part of the voyage with us. That's kind of a tour.